Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of say, well, why doesn't he just say, I'm Jesus, I'm God, and I'm here to save you? Why didn't he just do that? Well, did Jesus do that in Scripture? Very seldom. He's always teaching, always making them think. I think of the instance when John asked, are you the, John the Baptist in prison? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And uh, his disciples came back and said, report to John what you see and hear. And he talks about how he came and is fulfilling the prophecies. It'd be easy for him to just say, yeah, I'm, I'm the Savior, I'm the one. But what proof is there? He'd have doubts later. But if he has the ongoing testimony of what Jesus does and is doing, that gives credence to what he says. So he points to that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that simple faith of a child. And that's really what's the most important thing in this whole episode is to have that kind of simple faith like a child and to trust it and then let the evidence support what you trust. Your faith comes first by the power of the Spirit and then the evidence reinforces that faith. And that's what we do as we study scripture. We accept it by faith and then it reinforces. Just like we heard from Pastor Scott, if you heard early and you'll hear late, baptism gives us that new life. You're born again through baptism, puts faith in your heart, but then you grow with it throughout your life and you see how I am claimed by Jesus and he is fulfilling everything he promised so that everything else supports that faith that you have. All right, um, good thoughts, good points. Um, some things I'd like to point out too here as we look at this, um, just some things that were key in here. As Jesus was going through this episode, did you see him showing any habits or routines that were of a godly nature? Brushing his teeth. Brushing his teeth, yeah, taking care of the physical well-being. He did that in his own way. Praying, always. Um, he would say those prayers before he would eat, before he slept, and it was that conversation with his father. So if Jesus himself had to do that, who are we to think that we don't need to do such things? It was showing that pattern and getting that relationship with his father, keeping it going in his human side. Steve. Sharing and welcoming, compassion and care. That habit of that's just what you do. You are kind, you are caring. Yep. So some of those practices, routines that are good to have and for us to have those good routines in our life. Um, did you notice any other truly human aspects to Jesus in here that showed he was a lot like us in a lot of ways? Cut himself, Cut himself had to fix that up. Did you have anything else, me? Yeah, and that he had to t take care of that wound when he cut himself and, and wrap it up make, and take care of that. How did he get that? If he's perfect, why did he get a cut in the first place? Well, the human side still may not be perfectly coordinated all the time, or accidents can happen, you know, even to the best. So, um, yeah. Had to sleep, uh, and even got disturbed in the morning when the kids were there, bright and early, staring down at him. Any parents ever relate to that one? Yeah. All right, Carl? Yeah, just those perpetual question, 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 and he just kind of laughs to himself. Yeah, all right. All right, let me refocus you and slow you down a bit. Um, building a fire, had to do it with work and sweat. Anyone ever started a fire with a stick like that? Any Boy Scouts? Here you go, Lanny. All right, yeah. A lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't just happen quickly. It's, it's a tedious thing. I've never done it myself, but I have seen it actually done, and it, it is... Yeah, frustrating most of the time. So surely Jesus would have had to deal with that frustration. So making meals, the labor of providing food to eat. He didn't just conjure it up and bang it was there. Yeah, so all gifts are from God. Thank God for that and tell others about it. And that was one of the things he brought up there at the end is, I pray that my other disciples will learn like you have and tell their friends as you have. The importance of sharing the good news that we receive and passing it on to others. 
being responsible, following your responsibilities. How did he weave in Old Testament references that supported who he was? From Isaiah, yeah, he brought that up to reveal himself instead of just saying, I'm the son of God here to save you. That probably would have freaked those kids out. But instead, he just said um, the quote from Isaiah, the, the year of the Lord's favor and that prophecy that he fulfilled. Um, also, what did he teach them was important. What did he ask them to recite? One of the first things. Shema. You know where that comes from? Deuteronomy 6, um, chapter 6, and verse 4 and following. And it's that Shema. Shema is the first, uh, it's the Hebrew word for hear. So it's the first word of that, that sentence, that phrase that they repeat over and over. And that was a common thing that the Jewish people would practice of saying the Shema. And in fact, it was often written in their phylacteries and the, their things that they would wear on their forehead. They would wear a box or on their wrists. And uh, they would put that Shema in there. Hear, O Israel, Lord our God, Lord is one. Or in the mezuzah on the door frame, those little um, boxes that they would put on the door. You'll see this if you watch closely in these episodes. Often when they walk through a door into a house, you'll see them touch it and ki kiss it and kiss their fingers and touch it. So watch for that. And it's respect for the word of God. And that's often what's in that little box is the Shema. That hear the word of the Lord, listen to the word of the Lord, respect the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is precious and we should always respect it. And so pick up on that little, a little routine that you may say, that's kind of a silly, it's like throwing salt over your shoulder or something. No, but this is a redeemed form of that, truly turning your attention to the one who is important that we should listen to. So watch for those little subtleties along the way. Okay, um, also in here, uh, a very important lesson for uh, the parents in our midst and parenting, how did he teach them about God and instruct them? Did he sit them down at benches and say, it's time for school now, sit and listen and take notes? Would you see anything like that? No. He had them working, and as they were working, he would subtly work things in and teach as they went along through all the activity. And using little tools such as, oh, um, you know the Shema? Can you recite that for me? And then they just spoke it while they were sitting there doing their activity. And then also, as he started singing a little verse, and said, repeat after me, just sing this with me. The power of music. I love how that was woven into there. That Jesus himself... Um, teaching through song. Surely he did that with his disciples along the way, the singing, the power of singing to reinforce into your head. Uh, so that was beautiful. Um, the te Right, when he was talking to that older boy about um, how to get along in justice and who's, who has the right to enact justice and talking to them, so it was relating to their real life and the situation that they were dealing with. How do you handle that situation? But he wove it back to the Old Testament. Which reference did he use? David and Saul. You remember that encounter? If you don't, look that one up. When Saul was pursuing David, trying to kill David, and a couple of different instances, but one when Saul went into a cave to relieve himself and David and his compatriots were hiding in there, David crept up behind him, could have killed him, instead just cut off a corner of his garment. And even that he felt guilty about later, that I shouldn't have even done that. But he was showing justice is up to God, and we are to leave it in God's hands. It's not our place to do it. And so David was an example for that. So that teaching through the example, through the words of life, through the questions of life, the challenges, that was beautiful and how they wove that in quite well in this episode. Um, the other thing that Jesus taught to them uh, was the importance of prayer. And which prayer did he teach them? Lord's Prayer. So that beautiful teaching of um, his word in those ways. So um, anything else that stood out, a key thing from, those are some of the highlights I wanted to touch on, make sure I hit on. Julie, the manger. the manger he made, okay, yeah, making those things for Abigail too, and the little items, could have been a little manger for her, remember where he came from, all right, um, neat stuff, um, passage to look at here in our last few minutes, Mark 10, 13 and 14, 
I made reference to this before, but this is a, an important one to highlight here in this lesson. Mark chapter 10. And specifically verses 13 through 15, really. Um, but 13 and 14 in particular. So it's Mark 10, verses 13 through 15. Can someone read that reference for us? Mark 10, 13 to 15. All right, thank you very much. Um, so that beautiful example of the children coming to him, Jesus saying how precious the children are to him. Uh, what do we learn about Jesus then by the way he relates to children? What does he value? Their faith, the simplicity of that faith, humbleness of the child, childlike faith, and holds it up as a model for the rest of us. And how should we treat children then? Value them and learn from them, not just as a possession that we're trying to take control of and shape in the way we want, but to listen and learn along the way and let the children be themselves a little bit. Cindy. Cindy. Right. Yeah, to have that trust, that simple faith. Oh, yeah, Grandma's in heaven with Jesus, so that's good. Let's go on. Um, and not to worry about it, not to dwell on it. Do we sometimes stifle that faith of a child by forcing them to think like an adult or act like an adult? Like, uh, say, shh, don't be quiet, or be quiet, don't talk about that when they're talking about their faith, and we force them to silence that faith. Or... Um, Funerals. I've heard many who would say, oh, I'll never take my child to a funeral. That's too creepy. Why not? A funeral is a place to see the reality of death, but the reality of life in Christ. And it's a place to celebrate. In a Christian funeral, it should be a time of celebration what really matters. And, and children can also be some of the best comforters in the time of bereavement with statements just like that. Carol? Carol? Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how did that make you feel compared to some of the advice you got from people at the funeral home? <laughs> like, it's okay, you'll be all right, or the, the little platitudes that adults often say because they don't want to say any, or they just stand there silently because oh, I don't know what to say, to come right out with that faith of, it's okay, Uncle John's living the greatest life ever, you know? What a statement of faith, powerful words. And so the importance of not stifling children to have that faith and encourage that faith and learn from that faith is so valuable. Uh, I love the children's message. Some people say, oh, I wonder what they're gonna say to stump you up there. I love it when they get you off track. I love those distractions. I love to see where they're gonna go, the tangents, and to see, hmm, that's a good lesson for us all to learn today. And to work with that and grow with that, that that's awesome. So uh, I think that's when you really get a good rapport with kids, when they can say those things out loud and, and you can learn from it. So, 
Okay. Um, also from uh, that passage, uh, just Jesus is teaching this lesson, the importance of that tactile connection. Because verse 16 goes on and says, and he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. That children relish that positive contact. And I think we have hurt ourselves so much in our society where we are terrified to touch a child lest we see as doing something improper and get arrested for mistreatment or something. And it's caused real walls between um, parents and children and between caregivers and the people they're caring for. There is a physical side to care. Yes, there's always the appropriate way, and there's abuse to that. But we di do we give up the good because there's some who destroy the good? Do we give up the gift of God because some abuse it? And that's a line that we've got to be real careful on. I've seen beautiful ways in which our teachers down in the preschool will take up a child and just hold them for a while, and that's what calms them down when they're upset. It's done appropriately, done in the proper way, the power of that physical touch in a proper way. And I think that's important in good Christian households for parents not to be afraid of touching their children and showing them that physical care. Sometimes we're fearful of that, especially dads, you know. Well, how do I touch? I don't want my kid to be a weenie. I don't want him to be wimpy. I don't want him to be too soft. Well, there's a balance. A balance of strong, heavy hand but also compassionate, caring hand. Uh, and uh, I, I suffered from that a little bit as a child, I'll be honest. My household of the old German nature was, oh, grandpa, man, you don't get near him. If, he's, if he touches you, it's probably not good. It's probably, shape up, you kids, you know, behave, or uh, boot in the back, you know, um, get in line. But uh, Heather helped change that into my household with my dad. Dad never hugged us, just never did. Until Heather just came along and started hugging him. And dad kind of, I like this. And it was like he enjoyed it, really appreciated it. And that was the first time my dad ever hugged me was after Heather opened him up that way. Still remember it. On the back porch of their parsonage in Wisconsin on a visit home from seminary one time. Uh, or, yeah, when I was, no, I was back from Minnesota already when I was a pastor because Heather was there with me. And uh, Heather was there and gave him a hug. and. And I went up to greet, say goodbye to dad. And then he opened his arm and gave me a hug. It made me cry. It still tears me up today. And that was when I was 28 years old. Uh, that kind of power is important too, I think we need to remember. All right? Are there observations or questions on anything in here? There's a lot more we could say, but I, I wanted to hit on those things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we as adults tend to think too much and to try to analyze things too deeply and try to make them fit our logic and our reason and our way of, of reasoning. And so to have that simple trusting faith that how can it be that that is, is body and blood of Christ? He said so. And we worry and doubt it and question it. And so that would be the bottom line note I want to end you with today is trust in the Lord with that faith of a child. Grow through studying the word. Jesus said even children can understand the word. So we still turn to the word. But we see how Jesus is the fulfillment of that word. And it reinforces the faith of a child as it grows closer to him. Let's rejoice in that. Cindy? Absolutely. So not just the, the church of the future, but the church of now. And they are an important part of that family of faith, and we cherish them in the church. And that's why I will go back to, I love children in worship with their families. That's where they are picking up more than you ever dream of. And when sometimes they just blurt out in the middle of the church and go, amen, I love it, praise God. 
or um, what's that? You know, those kind of things, the heartfelt openness of a child, and we can learn a lot from that. So praise God for children who are here and heard and seen and are part of our faith family. And I encourage you to always welcome families who bring their children into this place and make them feel certainly welcome because they are a precious part of the family. All right, great things, good things to talk about. Look forward to next week as we move on to episode number four. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a human, but God, who has come to save us. May we have faith as a child to receive you with joy and to grow closer to you each day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much. God bless you all.